What a cool place, huh, Max? Yeah, it just feels like we're, we're finally cruising again. I love places like this. We're kind of in the middle of nowhere, and uh, we have the entire place to ourselves after 2.30 p.m. when the ferry leaves, which is amazing. And it's been real good for us just to be able to relax a little bit and, uh, yeah, see what see what the cruising life is like and the beach and the islands and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Special better? place. Is it better than you expected? It's actually a lot better than I expected. I didn't really, I didn't really know what to expect. I mean, I'd, I'd heard that it was awesome and a nice place, but I mean, it's, it's a little paradise out here. Me and Grace are gonna go for a little paddle session around the fort. It's a beautiful day today. This spot is beautiful. This is the lemon, lemon tart. Pretty good size one too. And it's all of these nesting birds over here. Oopsie. It's like hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of birds nesting. So you're not allowed to really go close. They have these white buoys showing where you can go or not. So healthy too. It's really cool to see that it's been protected for so long that, I mean, the sharks aren't scared either when they're usually pretty skittish, so great. Oh, the smell of the birds are just crazy! <laughs> Poor birds! I got some new toys. I, I'm really quite fond of this company. It's the same company that gave us our underwater electric drill, Nemo Power Tools. And they sent me this underwater hole scrubber to test out. How long ago was it since we did the bottom? Uh, we've never done the bottom. We've this never is, cleaned it, right? No, this, so this is, uh, we painted it, uh, yeah, a little over 10 months ago. And we, I haven't even been in the water to, to clean it yet because it's been so cold. So we're finally in a place where it's it's warm and calm and the water's warm enough and uh, I'm gonna go do it. I don't actually think it's that bad. Oh yeah, it works great. You see how quickly it tore through that grass. It's grown, it's pretty much grown here since we've been here over the last week, but uh, yeah, it's gonna be a lot quicker to do it with this thing. I'm gonna tear into it, and maybe at least do do the top couple feet and then I'll put the scuba on and do the keel and prop and stuff. Sweet, all right.
These are sacrificial zincs. Those are no good. Stray electrical currents on a boat can cause electrolysis, which can literally dissolve any metal in contact with the salt water. So we add zincs that are a softer metal in the hopes that these will dissolve instead and protect your more expensive metal bits on the boat, like the propeller, which would cost thousands of dollars to replace. Wow, you were down there for a solid two hours. Was it? How was it? Uh, it works really well. There's quite a bit of grass that has grown since we've been here, but it comes off pretty good. I'm happy with it. Did you, were you managed to fix, do the whole hull? Uh, except for the rudder and the keel. Okay, wow. But I got the, like, the whole thing down about, is, you know, pretty far, like, yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. All by myself. Like wow. a big boy. This is the story of Delos. A sailboat adventurizing around the world for the past 10 years. And now, we embark on our greatest adventure of all. Come join us as we take to the high seas and travel the world with the newest member of our crew. If you enjoy Dello's videos, please subscribe. It's a great way to support our channel. We're doing it. We are gonna go diving today. <laughs> Check this out. The wind jammer wreck. It sunk in the early hours of January 21st, 1907 in heavy wind and waves, and it was attempting to pass around the dry Tortugas uh, when it hit the reef. Had a length of 261.4 feet, a beam of 39 feet, and a draft of 17 and a half feet. It's a big sailboat. That's Gross crazy. tonnage, 1,862 tons. Kaza, get in! <laughs> I don't even know what just, You don't have a snorkel or anything? <laughs> you need fins too, Kaza. You can't just go like that. What kind of diver are you? <laughs> Jeez. Amateur hour out here. Yeah, it would be really cool to zoom over to that other island, um, loggerhead, and walk around. Do whatever snorkel. you do at loggerhead. <laughs> but yeah, I, don't I think things know. to do at loggerhead are snorkel, snorkel and just walk on the beach. Well, that sounds lovely. Okay. So 
So we are right here. Loggerhead is this one just west of us, and then you can tie up, and then I think the snorkeling is on the west side of the island. a cool island it's only us on it too yeah no other people wow it's a pretty big lighthouse yeah. imagine in the olden days when they lived here and took care of the lit this lighthouse yeah, every night it seems so cool to me i know there's something very well, kind of mystical about lighthouses i always find out here all by yourself you know? right all by yourself just having the you know big responsibility to take care of the sailors that were out on the ocean so they don't hit the island, I guess. It is cool to think too that we're the only people on this island right now. Are you excited to go to the beach? Yes. Yes? yes. Okay. Nothing quite like a warm white sand beach with crystal clear water. It's really, really amazing. I like this spot. These islands are super, super cool. And because I think it's been protected for so long, the fish and stuff doesn't seem too skittish. I mean, when we were diving the other day, I came so close to like a hogfish and that never happens because in the Bahamas, like that's like the golden price if you're spear fishing, you know, a big hogfish. It's really weird to think that this is actually in the US. I'm still trying to get adjusted to it because it's such a beautiful place. And not that there's not beautiful places in the US, but there's just nobody here. It's like a yeah. Sunday and we're like the only people on this beach. And it's not even that far from Key West. I mean, you do have to, you do have to work to get out here, right? I mean, there's only the ferry, mm -hmm. which is only here for a couple hours. Seaplane. Seaplane and private boats are probably the only people that can really come here are those with their own dinghies and private boats. Yeah. The Nugs is loving it. Yeah. She's such a little water nugget. <laughs> uh oh, what did you do? Oh, did you too? Thank you. Can I have my water now? Schools of fish. It's so cool to get inside of them. They just see that boob all is one. It's amazing. The barracuda chasing them around. That's wild. Oh, they're right here. Good look.
What are you filming? You. No, no. Oh. Why? Oh, I don't know. I thought maybe you'd say something witty and charming. Oh. No. I feel like I've gone from like feeling slightly insane, like I'm gonna break down and cry sometimes, to like feeling really good. Like this is exactly what we needed. Yeah, cruising. And Sierra huh? is loving it. Like she has been in such a good mood lately because she's just, you know, at the beach. Can you put it on? <laughs> <laughs> Daggett, you're out of control. You're like a little beach gangster. Turn it around, Sierra. Turn it around. No, but I don't want it. Is that how it goes? It goes like that. <laughs> gangster. As we were sitting on the beach, we ran into a pretty cool young cruising family living on their sailboat. They hatched a plan for a special event that evening. Fire dancing using Fort Jefferson as a backdrop. What's about to happen? What? What is about to happen? So Megan is about to, I think she's going to start with the dragon because she usually does. She's going to put some uh, campfire fuel on these Kevlar wicks, light them on fire and do a fun show for everybody. Hey, Tiger Shark, what's about to happen right now? I'm on again a fire spin and I've seen it a hundred times. <laughs> so you're totally bored right now. Did you look at the weather this morning, Kaza? Yeah. Yeah. What did it say? Well, it says that it's going to be about 30 to 35 from 30 the 30 to 35? I thought it was like 25 to 30. Maybe. It's red. So it's... This comes there. There it comes. We're right there. So... Boom. And that's for three days. Yeah. Okay. It's going to come. Might need to move that a little bit. To the yeah, we'll trip. move her to get better protection out of the north. Yeah. The forecast called for northerly winds, which meant that our current spot would get a little bumpy from swell wrapping around the island. We decided to pull up the hook and move as close as possible to the fort and hopefully give us a little bit more protection from the swell. <laughs> Baby Nugs was on the case and doing her best to capture the action. Keep at it, little nugget. You'll be getting those shots in no time. Here it is, it's here. Look at that. Went from nothing up to a solid 20 within a matter of like one hour. It's crazy how fast it changes, huh? Over the next few days, we were pretty pinned down with winds blowing a solid 30 knots. The swell continued to build, making water exploration nearly impossible, so we decided to film the action from the protection of the fort. I don't think any of us slept very good last night. It's like a really weird swell wrapping around the island and kind of like coming in. So it was just, uh, I mean, the wind is not too bad, but the boat is moving a lot. It's kind of like we're sailing. Sierra wasn't sleeping very good. She woke up a lot because like things were bashing around. And... Being pinned down by weather is always a unique experience on a boat. We're completely at the mercy of the elements out here. And the only thing you can do is settle in and be patient. But nature carries on and amazed us to see how the birds continued their lives as normal throughout the blow.
But all blows eventually come to an end. And the next day, things return to normal with light winds out of the south. Since the weather has gotten a bit better, we have a few more boats that came in. And uh, there was one boat that had looked like they had a really hard time anchoring. So after a while, Brian just went over there just to like offer. It's always hard. Like you don't want to be disrespectful and be like, oh, you look like you need help. <laughs> but at the same time, it's like horrible if people are stressed out and anchoring and stuff if they're new to it. So he opted to go over there. What, he snagged something? Yeah, I think he dropped and I think he snagged. I think they have like a grid system set out for this mooring. Oh. And I think he snagged part of it. Oh, so he's stuck on something. Like he can't yeah, he can't his... get the hook up, right? It, and when he tries to pull it up, it's like going straight down. Oh. I'm going to throw on a mask and just see if I can see it and maybe guide him around it. So I think Brian uh, just decided to go down on scuba. So he's now just like screaming to the dude what to do, basically. So he's hooked on the mooring ball, Brian is saying. So it's a little bit of chaos. <laughs> I bet Brian will let us know, but I think from what I understand, he's hooked on the chain to the mooring ball. Oh, they got it up! I don't know how he managed to do it, but there's a giant chain down there for this mooring. And when he set his hook, he somehow managed to get the pick of the hook through the center of the chain. Oh, it was like lodged in there. It's the most bizarre thing I've ever seen. I can't believe I didn't bring the GoPro. Oh, no. And so I had to basically like lift his anchor up because his anchor was upside down and I had to flip it and then pull it out sideways. Yeah. And then I saw you guys help them dock. Or yeah, they're or... quite a little frazzled, I think. Yeah. Better that they're over there far away from Yeah, us. I know. I saw a build being like, that way. Let's go over To the there. ocean. <laughs> It's gonna be like, why don't you just anchor right in front of this little boat here, Calico Skies? It's really gonna yeah, open right yeah, in front yeah. of it. <laughs> yeah. Got my rum, got my coat, got my speaker, got my music, tripod, camera, pirate box. We're gonna go ahead and do a time lapse. I think the most thing I'm excited about though is this. I charged up my underwater laser. Whoa! Isn't that crazy? That's so bright. And so my idea is I'm gonna go in and do time lapses and then I'm gonna like paint, try and like paint stuff on the fort like this. Whoa. Like with long exposures. I'm excited Ooh. to see the time lapse and the okay. pictures. <laughs> do my best. Have fun! Bye bye. Well, I've decided to come into the fort tonight and film another segment of Confessions of a Time Lapse Addict. Uh, pretty cool location tonight. We're at the fort, uh, Fort Jefferson in Dry Tortugas. And uh, it's a nice clear night. The breeze has come down a little bit. Stars are shining and best of all, there's zero light pollution out here. So I was hoping to catch like the silhouette of the fort in the background and then Maybe I like it when like stars kind of come behind stuff as they're moving through the frame. Yeah, we'll set it up and see how it goes. But yeah, and I'm gonna do a GoPro versus GH5 on this one and we'll see which one looks cooler. All right. So nice one. See, so generally what you're trying to do is find a sweet spot between the aperture, the shutter speed, and the ISO, right? You want your aperture open yep. as much as possible to let in as much light as possible that you have. And then your ISO is your sensitivity, so you want to try and keep that low because if it's too high, it'll introduce noise. And so now okay. it's a matter of playing with um, accommodations of ISO and shutter speed. Back at the beach. Working on some time lapses and chilling out. Um, but it's a really special place here, Dry Tortugas. Um, very peaceful and quiet. Perfect for this kind of activity. I think I filmed that upside down, but it'll still work. How you doing? Not that great. 
No? I can't find ISO. Oh, it's on the button on top. On the very right. Where? Kind of. This one right here. Oh, right no. behind the wheel. Oh, that would be helpful. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so I got a math question for you. Uh huh. So I've got my camera going. Yep. It's taking one shot every 30 seconds. Okay. Right, so if we want, if we're dealing with the 30 frame per second video, how long do we have to wait to get five seconds of time lapse? <laughs> <laughs> I still want to find my ISO. <laughs> Yeah, kind of my nighttime time lapse game here, you know. The balance between ISO and shutter speed. How's it looking, Brian? I have no idea. <laughs> but I think pretty good. I'm sure it's gonna look good. Did you get all set up yet? Uh, yeah, I know it takes a while. Pretty cool laser, Brian. Okay, N. N for nugget. Nugget was here, done. Are you okay? Yeah, I figured out. Uh oh. Low battery. <laughs> bye bye. Yeah, I forgot to charge. All Sorry. gone. It's okay. Up next on Delos, we explore Key West. Hey guys! Ryan! Hey, John, thanks for getting me back into boating. And Taylor joins us as new crew. This is gonna be our new home for a while! <laughs> wow, this is so sweet! There she is! Nice! Yay! She made it! Is it official now? Bye bye. Are you gonna be a. Oh, there goes the lens! There yeah. goes the lift. <laughs> oh, that's a close up. That's a real close up right there. Ryan in the so mic. Right Do you like the dry tortugas nuts? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, vlogger. <laughs> Your mom is silly. Do your dance, Kazatron. Do the dance. Do the dance, yo. Yeah. Do the dance. The longer head dance. <laughs> oh boy. Yeah, does it, does it look good? Is, is it in focus? How's the exposure? Got your aperture set? ISO real high? Is it bright? Yeah. No? I think that's it. I like it. I like it a lot. I like it a lot.